Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran Denver-based jazz trumpeter Al Hood. He talked about his latest 2019 CD, Al Hood and the H2 Jazz. It's charting well, and he talked about it. He comes from the small upstate New York town of Pumpkin Hook and has been performing music for over 35 years, dividing his career between performing and teaching full-time since 1999 at the University of Denver's Lamont School of Music as a professor of trumpet. He is a leading authority on the life and work of jazz trumpet legend Clifford Brown, and he's got great stories, so get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Al, thank you for taking a minute for Neon Jazz, man. I appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure, Joe. Thank you. You bet. So let's talk about your latest album. It's charting well. It's a great album. Another one in, in your line of quality discs that you put out, the uh, Al Hood and the H2 Jazz. Talk to me about this project. What was your artistic vision with this particular project? Well, how it started is, um, you, you know, I teach at the University of Denver, Lamont School of Music, and I, I did a faculty recital um, called Jazz Muses based on these 10 trumpet players that influenced me the most in my life and career. And I had my uh, co-leader of the H2 group, Dave Hansen, do arrangements on each of the charts. And we, we put it out, put out the recital, and did a performance at a couple of jazz clubs, and it was pretty popular. So I said, uh, let's record this <laughs> project. Right on. That's, that's how it came about. What is your vision for each project? Obviously, this one was paying homage to trumpet players that have been influential on your you know, on your mentality as far as being a jazz musician. But what are other projects like you? Mm -hmm. Are they a snapshot in time? Are they an evolution of your life as a player? What do they mean to you? Uh, they, they usually come from um, kind of long-seated uh, influences of mine. Like my, my first album, Just a Little Taste, was an album with strings. And, of course, that harkens back to the Clifford Brown with strings uh, album, which I grew up with and loved so much. So, again, Dave Hansen did all those arrangements. And um, and we just had a great time putting that out. To have, a like, a first album be with strings was kind of a dream of mine. Um, and then we did a couple of H2 big band projects. And um, we wanted to feature certain artists. On the first one, we had the great Bobby Shue on trumpet. And then the wonderful vocalist Renee Marie on the second project. Um, so they're kind of they're music of the moment in the, for those ones, for sure. So it seems like the path for a lot of musicians is they, they get, they're in the Midwest, they're born or they go to school, and then they move to the coast. Mm -hmm. You did it the other way around. You grew up in a small upstate New York town known as Pumpkin Hook, and now you're in Denver. Yes. Talk, to, talk to me a little bit about your beginnings in jazz, how you picked up the trumpet, maybe some music you were listening to as you were a kid. Sure. Um, yeah, I grew up in um, upstate New York. I was actually born in Rochester, New York, and uh, Pumpkin Hook is like a, a little town about 25 miles outside of that in the country. Uh, so I lived in a very rural area and um, basically started trumpet when I was 13. It's the uh, kind of um, urging of my mother. She helped me pick that instrument. And uh, at that time, when I was 13, there was a lot of... Uh, Trumpet on the radio and the TV, namely Doc Sedlinson <laughs> on The Tonight Show, and uh, people like Mater Ferguson and Herb Alpert, and of course, um, the great Chuck Mangione, who was a, a Rochester native, um, and that's when his Feel So Good album was com coming out, and very influential, and that's that kind of got me going in the popular vein of trumpet playing. And then I had a high school uh, trumpet teacher that just would give me albums every week. Clifford Brown, Lee Morgan, Miles Davis, Art Blakey albums, uh, just week after week. And I was completely inspired to to get into jazz full force at that time. And then I did kind of the usual route of schooling. Um, I went to the University of Kentucky and studied with a great trumpet teacher there and uh, did my master's up in Illinois. So I started dotting around the country. Um, then I went to the University of Texas, University of Miami. I've taught in Richmond, Virginia, and now I have a teaching post in Denver. So I've just kind of been dotting around the country, uh, playing and teaching. So that's, that's kind of how I got into the whole thing. So did you always know that you wanted to be a musician or were there other things on your radar? No, I always knew that as soon as I as soon as I got in, into trumpet playing and 
had a few great jazz experiences. I actually got to play with Chuck Maggioni when I was in high school. That was kind of a high-level experience, um, backing him up. So, uh, yeah, I, I knew then that's what I wanted to do. And then the, the teaching part, I figured out a little bit later, kind of was on, when I was in my master's degree, and I knew I wanted to teach music. Over your career, you've had the chance, you know, you've mentioned The Tonight Show, you've had the chance to be with Doc Severinsen, mm-hmm. you know, the Manhattan Transfer, Richie Cole, John Fattis, Clark Perry. There's a lot of big names, a lot of legends, a lot of stories with these people. My question to you is this. What did you learn from those that are legends and luminaries of the jazz world? Well, I think um, what I saw time after time in each each of those players was a uh, complete, unbelievable dedication to their instrument and their craft and their art form. Um, when, you, when you hear them on records and you're a young player and you're, you're just learning, they go, oh, and they're they're really great players. I want to play like that, um, but but you don't really realize the hard work that went into it um, behind it. And when we get to play with one of those people and be around them, you know, you see them you see them warming up. You see them spending time doing this, and you, you hear them talking about their hours of dedicated practice that they put in. Um, Doc Severance is a great example. I was. Uh, got to play with him a few times and he would show up like three hours early before the gig and start warming up and playing and going through his things just just completely dedicated to music and the instrument and i saw that with each of these people that i've gotten to play with so that was a good learning experience so specifically being a teacher talk to me about one of the most influential teachers that have that have really laid the groundwork for you and that really was important in your life Yes, um, without a doubt, it uh, had to be my trumpet teacher at the University of Kentucky after I left high school. His name is Vince DiMartino. Um, he toured with Clark Terry in Lionel Hampton Band. And, um, he, he's an uh, amazing, astounding classical and jazz trumpet player and lead trumpet player. And uh, he was just happened to be teaching at the University of Kentucky for, for many years. He's now retired. Uh, but he had a great trumpet studio there, and I, I uh, met him in Rochester and ended up going to Kentucky. And he just taught me everything there is to know about, you know, being being an efficient trumpet player, um, playing the different styles, putting, putting me in a lot of situations that gave me great experiences. I, I still look back to his teaching um, now as I play and practice and teach my students. And he's still going strong, too. He's, even though he's retired, he's still teaching and clinicking and playing, and he's just a just a powerhouse. So I hear good things about the Denver jazz scene. Ron Miles, I've interviewed mm-hmm. some years back, and I've just oh, yeah. had, yeah, yeah I've, you know, and you're kind of close to Kansas City, and there's just this sense that things are going good up there. But I want to know from you, how is Denver these days? It's it's better than it's ever been for sure. Yeah, but I, I it's hard to believe that a oh they call this like a flyover city, <laughs> you know, to get to get to the coast or something. But um, really, the amount of talent and the amount of um, trained jazz musicians that live in a city of this size is, is immense. Really, it's great. It grows every year. People are moving here. They enjoy living in this area of the country. We have several clubs. Uh, that offer jazz and a lot of recordings going on here. You're, you're never at once for, you know, going to hear something good each night of the week or going to a jam session or something. Probably similar to Kansas City. I know that has a fantastic scene, but I, I would probably put it on on that level. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So you've been at this for a long, long time, for decades, as both a performer, recording artist, and a teacher. Are you happy with where you're at with your career? I am, yeah. I'm, I'm mainly a teacher. If I were, you know, to describe to anybody what I do, I, I'm kind of a tried and true teacher. <laughs> um, so, so I'm mostly found in the university and in clinic situations and things like that. But I get to play as much as I want to, record and play as much as I'd like to, and, um, which isn't, a, you know, it's not a full, I'm not a full time player that's out on the road or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I enjoy that. Enjoy the teaching the most, playing what I'd love to do, and 
and just living a good life in the Rocky Mountain region here. What is the number one thing you want to teach a student? For me as a trumpet teacher, I want to teach them how to be efficient on the trumpet, to play it properly without any undue strain or any unnecessary uh, movements or anything like that, and just have the best, most personalized sound that they could get. Yeah, that's, I, I find myself spending more time doing that than anything else. But right. hopefully at the same time passing on a love for, <laughs> and a passion for the music. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I hope they see that in their teachers and in their mentors. You know, the one thing that's always I've always kind of asked about, because in Kansas City we have 18 and Vine, and there was so much that happened back in the 30s mm -hmm. and in the heyday. Mm -hmm. If you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see a show, where would you go? Who would you see? Without a doubt, I would see Clifford Brown. <laughs> um, <laughs> cause he, he, he's like a huge uh, influence on me, and I, I've studied his life and uh, his music ever since I was a, uh, a young man. And uh, I probably want to go see that those shows with Art Blakey at, at Birdland in 1954. Fortunately, we have the recordings of them. Um, yeah. But I, I would have loved to see that too, because there's just an electric power that comes out of that music when I listen to the album. So I'm glad, so glad they captured that. Absolutely. So, but any one of his shows. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So. Let me ask you this. Tell me one of the very first live jazz shows you saw that left a big impression on you. Hmm. I saw I saw the Buddy Rich band, big band. Uh, they came to my high school. That was probably one of the first things I saw. Yeah. And then I, as a high school student, I tried to go out and hear the big bands that would come come to town, like Woody Herman, uh, things like that. Yeah, I didn't get I didn't get to see much small group jazz until. I, I left kind of the Rochester area. Um, so it was big band stuff, yeah. So let me ask you this. Why do you love jazz? The individualism of each of the players that they get to uh, enjoy and express to other people. I, you know, I love classical music too, um, but there's a certain, if I could say, confinement to kind of staying in a particular sound and style, which I can appreciate as well when you're playing, someone's playing at a high level. But with jazz, just that individual expression of he hearing what the person is about and what they're really like, kind of their, you can almost kind of hear their trials and tribulations and joys and passions and everything all coming out in the phrases and the sounds they play. So I, so I enjoy doing that with my music. And I try to express something <laughs> as I'm you know, creating a solo that I hope people get, you know, kind of a storyline and a, my personality, things like that. So, yeah, that individual expression and a freedom, if you will. Um, people right always on. talk about that, free, freedom of that. Yeah. Freedom is yeah. huge. That's the number one answer every time. So everything's going to uh, come down yeah. to this. I got one final question for you. And everyone has a version or an interpretation of you, your students, your family, your friends, your fans, but you are leading your life. Who do you think you are? Hmm, good question. I, I think, like I said earlier, I am a teacher, for sure, at heart. That's, uh, that's kind of something I feel that I was brought here to do. And um, I love guiding young students in new directions and um, just getting 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 them going the right way and in the with the right techniques and all that. Like I said, ha helping them play efficiently, helping them hear different music, um, telling them what it's like to be a professional musician, and guide them in that direction. So, uh, you know, I love to play, but I, I'm a teacher actually. So that's what I would say. Beautiful, Al. Thank you for taking a minute out to talk about the new album. Good luck with it, and thanks for what you do for Chad. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Denver, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Al for his cool and his music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends.
Leon Jez.